Wow, the sun is making this look really bright, but I'm about to head to the gym for our team training Saturday. I've shown some of the team training before. I thought that this day would be particularly fun to show because we are doing a variation of one of the semifinals workouts, and I thought it'd be cool to talk about how to scale those workouts appropriately for, you know, someone who's uh, not competing for the CrossFit Games. And it's, uh, it's a group, and groups are always fun. I don't get to work out with groups that often, but I get to again today. So I thought I'd take you all along with me, talk about how you could scale down the regionals workouts, because I also figure a lot of you have seen them done by like the most elite. So here is it done by the less elite. It'll be fun. All right, let's head to the gym. All right, so this is our RX Plus class again. So RX Plus is our competitors class. Everyone in this class has a lot of CrossFit experience and has to meet a certain benchmark to be able to be in this class. And we have these warm-ups that are almost a workout in themselves. So you can see it there on your screen right now. It's several rounds of things. We've got a row, we've got interim push-ups, air squats, then we have TheraBand work, more rounds of things, single unders, burpees, crossovers, barbell good mornings, overhead squats, and more rounds of things there again. So as you can see, it's a pretty detailed warm up, and it's not coach led like they do in our general classes. So when you're in this competitor's environment, you have to be able to take yourself through certain things where if you're someone who is newer to CrossFit or if you have to stumble upon this video and haven't been to a CrossFit gym, most of the times in a regular class, you are going to get, you know, feedback from a coach the whole time. The coach is going to lead you through every step of the warm up. But the competitors class, it's just a little bit different. Still working on those crossovers and trying to uh, become more efficient at them. It's a lot of arm movement. It's kind of a crazy movement compared to how tight the double unders are, but it's good to change it up. It has made double unders more difficult for me though, because switching back and forth, it's totally different on your brain. But as you can see again, all of the class is going through this at their own pace and it takes about 20 minutes to do all of this, which is a longer warm up than most classes, a regular class does. And you gotta be able to do it yourself. So it's different, but I like it. It gets you very, very warm and very ready for the workout. It's one of my favorite ways to warm up, but is not, doesn't make as much sense for most classes. So this was the strength portion of our workout and it's with a running clock, complete a 400 meter run in the first two minute window. Then every two minutes after complete the DB complex, dumbbell complex and increase the weight for the next two minute window until unable to complete the complex unbroken. So the complex is five deadlifts, five hang squat cleans, five front squats, five shoulder to overhead. And you see the woman in the front there, she's one of our athletes who are on our semifinals team. Very strong, she cleared the ladder. You can see on the bottom there, those are the weights for the women and for the men. You had to do a 200 meter sprint as a tie break score. The woman you just saw finished, she still did that tie break run because there are multiple people who finished the heaviest weight, which was super impressive. For women, it was 55 pounds, so two 55 pound dumbbells. For men, it was 70. I did not get there. I am in this video, you can see me. I have the green sports bra on and the pink knee sleeves. And uh, this got pretty tough pretty fast for me. I ended up getting knocked out at the fourth weight and had to go for my sprint. Dumbbells are very, very different than a barbell. So if you add the weight together, the weight for the one that I end up failing, which is the next one, not the one I'm doing right now, it is 
combined 90 pounds. Could I do this complex with a 90 pound barbell? Pretty easily. But with the dumbbells, it's just the weight is all in one hand. It's not distributed as evenly and you have to be able to be efficient. You can see I'm like confused at how to even clean these because the way I'm holding the dumbbell, it's leaned too far forward and you need to get it more in the middle of your hand to clean it at heavier weights. I didn't even realize that until I was in the moment. And there you go, I bottomed out at that squat. It just was way heavy for me. I ended up putting it down because there's no way I was going to complete eight more squats with that weight and uh, went for my tie break run and uh, was happy that I got that far. That's kind of where I expected to get on that one. It's gonna be, it's gonna be great. It's gonna be. As you can see there, warming up for this workout went really well. Anyway, into the workout, you can see this person in front of me just uh, failed their first overhead squat. And I heard from some other people that was a very common occurrence. I think it's partially because it's Saturday, which is our last day of training, and probably from the volume of all the dumbbell squatting we did right before this. But now let's take a look at what this workout is. This is what I was talking about when I was talking about a variation on the regionals workout. This was workout six at regionals. So on your screen, you can see the white box. That is the workout that was programmed for us. The black box, that is the semifinals workout. Did I say regionals earlier? I may have said regionals. It is semifinals now. I'm just stuck in 2018. Anyway, semifinals, the gray box, the semifinals version, the white box is our version that we're doing here today. This was workout six. I believe this is one of the workout that correlated most strongly with the actual results of who went to the games. It's one of the more traditional CrossFit workouts. And if we take a look at it and the similarities of it, all the movements are very similar and in the same order. But you can see right off the bat, the weight is lighter and we reduced some of the reps. So it says we've got 20 overhead squats in the semifinals version. In ours, we have 15. The weight in semifinals, 125. 185 the weight here 95 135 so the idea with this scaling is to get a similar stimulus but to be able to do it so if the weight was as heavy as it was at semis i would have been doing like two or three reps at a time at semis you saw almost everyone go 10 and 10 unbroken so we had a weight where i could go 15 unbroken 500 meter run, exactly the same at semifinals as it was here. Then we had no parallel walks because I don't think many of us can do those. So we just skipped that. Then went into two seated legless rope climbs for the semis. For us, we did just three regular rope climbs and I've not done a lot of legless rope climbing. Haven't built up the muscular endurance for that. So I did three half lengths up the rope. So rope is 15 feet. I did about eight feet just to be able to keep going and not have to worry about failing. So we had three of those. They had two, but different, slightly different movement. Then they had 20 strict chest to wall handstand pushups. We just did 12, which was a good number for me. I had to break them up, but didn't fail. You'll see that. I'm still on the row right now. Again, I'm in that green sports bra, black pants right next to the workouts you see there. And then it goes backwards, you reverse it. It's a pyramid. We go back down the pyramid or back down the ladder, whatever phrase you wanna use. And you can see it right there on your screen. You do the movements backwards. So you can take a look right now. We've got some of the stronger guys already on those rope climbs, legless rope climbs. I am just finishing up my row. Took me a little bit longer than some people on the overhead squats. I was going a little bit heavier than some of the women around me. So it was a little bit slower, but getting off the rower now, about to head over to do my half legless rope climbs. I was a little concerned after you saw my warm up rep where I just fell down. So going to chalk up my hands to try and ensure that I uh, don't do that again and hopefully successfully 
complete the rep. And to be totally honest, I think this was my best legless rope climb. I actually sort of got that little kick. You see with my legs there down as opposed to the big clip, which I started to resort to to get a little bit higher. But just climbing about halfway up, coming back down. There's no line marking halfway. But my friend there, her name's Portia, indicated when I got to halfway for me, which was helpful. And I started doing the same for her here as she climbed her way up that rope, get a touch, and then come back down. Just trying to build up that volume. So I was showing you some of the scales they give us. This is an additional scale I used. I almost did a legged rope climb there. I kind of forgot what I was doing. But this was an additional scale we decided to use. But you can scale this even further. So say you can't do any amount of a legless rope climb. Then you could just scale it to a legged rope climb. Or you could sit on the ground in that seated position they were doing at the games and just do a pull up on the rope to get used to that stimulus of pulling yourself without using your feet. So this is scalable in a lot of ways. Overhead squat, you just scale the weight. If you really had to scale the overhead portion, you could even do a front squat. 500 meter row, that's pretty much not scalable. I mean, you could scale it to less of a row, but most people could do that. Just, just do that one. Um, walking over now to the strict chest to wall handstand push-ups. We have 12 of them. I ended up breaking it up into four sets of three. And I did it just with my head flat to the ground. We did it with the semi-final style. So you touch your chest to the floor first and kind of wall walk your way up. Although you don't have to do a full wall walk. You just touch your chest, back your hands up, and then climb up. But additional scales, some people are using an ab mat. So you're going to an ab mat to make the floor a little bit higher as opposed to going the full depth of getting your head to touch the ground. That's a scale. If you needed to scale even further than using ab mats, like if you had to use several ab mats, then it probably makes sense just to do a more traditional handstand push-up, just kicking up onto the wall facing outward and just do a regular handstand push-up. You could do that strict. You could even do that kipping. And if you need to take it even farther down of a scale, you can just do regular push-ups. So there are a lot of options out there if you need to scale these sort of things. So everything in CrossFit is infinitely scalable. And I think people get intimidated by seeing these semifinal workouts and the capacity these semifinals athletes have to complete these so quickly. But the reality is we can all break it down in a way that we can experience it. I may have been a little bit conservative with my breaking up of these strict wall facing handstand pushups, but I did a video showing the last time I did these in a workout and I ended up failing at the end and having to wait a while just to get my next rep. So I decided to take them a little bit slower just to ensure that I wouldn't mess it up this time and I'd be able to keep moving and take strategic rests. And that's one of the smart things that you do with gymnastics because when gymnastics goes, you just sort of have to wait for it. You have to wait for that muscular endurance to come back. So being a little bit more strategic can be smarter. So getting into my last couple reps before another gymnastics movement, again, that evolves a lot of my arms, which is going back to this rope. So. I debate whether I made the right decision breaking it up or not. Probably could have done a couple more. How would that have affected my rope climbs? You just don't really know. So going over the other rope this time, but chalking up before I head that way. I need to do more legless rope climbs so that these are a little bit smoother, but being able to pull yourself up a rope any amount without your legs for most people is, you know, a fairly impressive thing. The nice thing about this other rope that I was using, although it was farther from the camera, it actually had a line marking where halfway was because I believe they used it in the Masters semifinals and we had a Masters athlete competing in those at our gym. So they actually had to mark the rope with that halfway distance. Makes it a little bit easier to know when you've completed the work you need to complete. But guessing, you know, creates more spatial awareness, I guess. You can look at it that way too. But using a lot of that big kip, or trying to at least, that's a kip that Alessandra Pacelli used back in the CrossFit Games the first time they had legless rope climbs. And she was 
one of the few women who were successful at that workout. She was actually the coach of this workout today. So funny full circle moment there. Have one more rope climb to do before I'm getting back on the rower and just giving myself a second before I jump up to this. And we're gonna find out, I still jumped up a second too soon. <laughs> so I go to jump and I just had no real grip to do it and came back down and sort of laughed at myself because I thought, I thought I'd given myself enough time to complete that rope climb, but uh, that was definitely not halfway. You can still see me in the frame. Coming back, chalked up, talked to myself about my failure, <laughs> um, got my ego in check, and uh, getting ready to do my final rope climb. It's that final one sometimes. That's what I also failed on that handstand push-up at my last workout. That final rep sometimes, you just wanna do it, you just wanna get it done, but if you fail it, you're gonna waste more time than if you waited a couple extra seconds and got it on your first attempt. So getting that final rope climb, getting my feet in so I can come back down. And then we are off to the rower for 500 more meters. And this is an interesting 500 meters because after this, you still have a fairly heavy, at least for me, and would have been heavier for the athletes at semifinals, different weight, but heavy for both of us, um, overhead squat. So with that heavy overhead squat and wanting to go unbroken on it, I didn't actually know I was gonna go unbroken on it this time, but at least unbroken or break it up once was the goal. And you need to keep a little bit in the tank for that because that is a challenging thing to do, especially at this point in the workout. So you don't want to kill yourself in a row, but you also don't want to go so slow that you're losing time. You just pick a moderate pace, stick with it, get your breathing back under control, loosen your fingers a little bit on the rower handle because you just use a ton of grip on those legless rope climbs and you're gonna to need to hold on to that bar that's gonna be overhead for the overhead squats. So you just wanna be aggressive yet conservative. It's a complicated thing to do, but you gotta stick with it. You gotta push down the gas pedal a little bit, but you don't wanna burn out. So moderate, I guess moderate is the word. Keep a moderate pace and just keep moving. The nice thing about rowing is even if you're doing it slower, you're still doing it. So you just gotta keep going. This is a fairly wide angle. It's not great for seeing squat depth, even just like watching other people do it, but it's what I needed to get all the movements in to the screen so you could see them all. So it might be hard to see the squats, but you know, I don't have a camera person. It's just me and the camera setup. That was Cole. He's one of our competitive athletes just walked through the camera. He's already done because he's not good. We've got a lot of really, really good athletes at this gym who very competitive. A couple semifinals athletes were in this class on the other side of the room doing this workout. Athletes that competed this past year on our team. So it's a pretty good group to really push with. And I think that's why I ended up doing these overhead squats unbroken. Not because I wanted to, but because I was in, a, in with a group of people that helped me push. And that's sometimes what you need. And shared suffering, you know, it makes everyone a little bit closer. And it's just nice sometimes when you're working out alone all the time to actually have some shared suffering. I just moved that rower because I felt a little claustrophobic in this corner putting my knee sleeves back on, took them down for the rope climbs to protect my shins. And now that we've got these moderately heavy overhead squats, we're gonna use them to protect my, not protect my knees, but you know, help me out a little bit because they're allowed. So why not take advantage? Into those overhead squats, 15. I actually think I do 16, but someone walks in from the camera so we don't get a solid count on my reps, but I didn't wanna short change it so better off doing one extra than doing one fewer, right? So did as many overhead squats as I could, unbroken, and it ended up being all of them. And I wanted to put it down, but it was one of those things where I got to rep eight and was like, well, you're at eight, let's just get to 10. Oh, you're at 10, now you only have five more. 
And the thing is, if you put it down at that point, you're gonna have to spend a lot more time picking it up. It's gonna add a ton of time to your overall time. So grinded through, tried to get them all done unbroken and uh, finished the workout there. Felt like, I felt like it was gonna take much longer than it did. It took me 14, 14, I believe. And uh, I was happy with that because I thought I was gonna time cap out. We didn't have a time cap, but I figured when they closed the gym would have been the time cap, but I made it. It was a lot of fun getting to do that with class. I definitely wouldn't have went as hard on that workout. Like it's the point where you push to a place that you didn't think you could get to. Like I thought there was no way I could do those overhead squats unbroken. And I did. I didn't know if I was gonna finish that workout in anywhere close to the time cap that was given for the semifinals athletes who did a harder version of it, but I did. And that's all because of the environment. And I don't mind training alone because I, I have to sort of with my work schedule, but I, I don't mind it a lot of days. And there are a lot of days I can push pretty hard, but there's something about like a scary day, a day where there's a lot of movements that you just don't think you can do as well as you want to do them. And then having a room full of people to push you. And it just, makes everything somehow more accessible. All these things you think maybe I can't do when you're with a group of people who believe in you and who are also doing them, it all becomes a little bit easier and more accessible. So I always think there's some benefits of, even if you can't train with people every day, trying to get a day or two a week or a couple times a month where you can train with a group of people who are gonna push you harder than you think you can go. Because I think you can think that you're going your hardest and doing your best. And then when you have someone else right next to you who's breathing down your neck or who you're like, I want to get close to them or I want to stay within like, you know, a few reps of them, then you find a new gear that you didn't know you had. And that's why like you'll see people do better than they expected in competitions and beat their score that they got when they did the workout at their home gym. Because that, that extra adrenaline, it's like a drug and it's hard to get it when you're not with a group of people so really happy that i got to do this with a group of people cool to do a variation of one of the semifinals workouts and to show that you can really scale it down to any ability and get an experience sort of what the stimulus was that was intended for the workout by scaling it to what you can do that's still a challenge appreciate you watching and i'll see you in the next one. Oh, subscribe too if you know you want to do that thanks and like the video